Today I want to talk about navigation in a WPF MVVM application. So I have covered navigation before on my channel and it is a very popular concept on my channel because as you can imagine most apps need some kind of navigation and in WPF it's not always the most straightforward thing. So I want to revisit this concept, brush up on a lot of those topics and explore other scenarios because there are quite a few different scenarios for navigation. You might have a nav bar, you might want to navigate in your code after some kind of actions such as logging in. So I want to cover as many of those concepts as possible in this series. So let's begin by laying down the infrastructure for navigation and setting up a basic navigation scenario just switching between pages. But first let me introduce this demo. So I have my main window and the data context for my main window is my main view model. So if we go to my view models, let's look at the main view model. My main view model is going to have a current view model. And the current view model is going to determine what view we are currently on. So for example, if we're on the home view model I have over here, I want to be on the home view. So as you can imagine, navigation will just involve changing the value of this current view model property. But first, we need to configure the mapping from our home view model to our home view. Because it doesn't do that automatically, even though they are both prefixed with home, we have to manually do that. And we are going to take care of that in the main window. So as we recall, the data context for our main window is our main view model. And of course, we can use the main view model to get the current view model for the application. So here in the main window, we can bind the current view model on our main view model to the content property of a content control. So content and binding to the current view model. And of course, let's go ahead and set the current view model. So by default, we will have the current view model be the home view model. So just instantiate one of those. And as you can see, we do render the home view model. That is indeed the home view model, but we don't map it to the home view. So to do that, we can define some data templates inside of our content control. So our content control resources can have data templates inside of them. And we want to define a data template for the home view model. And we're going to have to import our view models namespace. So to do that, we can define a namespace up here, call it view models and just start typing view models and we should get the namespace in the intelligence that's maybe not when we're running. Let's go ahead and try this again. Never mind, actually my Visual Studio is just gonna crash real quick. All right, so back to importing the view models namespace. Let's begin typing our view models. And there we go, navigation mvvm.viewmodels. That is indeed the namespace. So now for our data type for the data template, we can use our home view model. We wanna map the home view model to the home view. And of course, we're gonna have to import our views so there we go, we can just do a control dot on there, and here we have our namespace. So now the home view model is mapped to a home view. So whenever the current view model is a home view model, then we will show the home view. There we go, that is indeed my home view. And before we forget, we should go ahead and do the same thing for the account view model. So set that as the current view model, and now we'll just copy this data template and make the changes as necessary. So the account view model will map to an account view. And here's our account view. So setting up data templates, that is the first step to setting up this infrastructure for navigation. But now we actually want to navigate. So whenever I click this home button, I want to go back to my home view. And if we look at the account view model, we have the command to navigate home. That's what that home button is binded to. And somehow we need this navigate home command, however we implement it, which we'll do in a little bit. But we need that command to tell the main view model to change the value of the current view model. And this is an example of view model communication, which I have done a video specifically on and I'll have linked below. So rather than our navigate home command referencing the main view model and changing this property, instead we'll tell some kind of mediator object about the new current view model. And then our main view model will grab that new value from the mediator. And I like to call these stores because they store application state in this case, it's the navigation state of the application. And I go over why I call them stores in my view model communication video. But for now, let's go ahead and create a new folder for stores. We're storing the navigation state for the application. So this is going to be a class called the navigation store. And we'll go ahead and make this public. And since we're storing navigation state, we're going to store the current view model for the application here rather than in the main view model. So we're going to copy this actually and move it into the navigation store and import what we need. This is read only right now. 
we only have a getter, but we are going to want to make this a setter as well so that we can change the navigation state for the application and actually switch views. So rather than our navigate home command telling the main view model about the new current view model, it's going to tell the navigation store about the new value for the current view model. So let's go ahead and implement this navigate home command. So we'll call this the navigate home command, make it public. And I do have a command base in this project just to scaffold out the basic I command interface. So we will extend command base, implement the abstract class, and all we got to do is override this method. So when we execute the navigate home command, we're going to set the navigation store current view model to a home view model. So that being said, we are going to need our navigation store inside of this command. So let's create a field for that import the navigation store and generate a constructor and now all we have to do is set the navigation stores current view model to the home view model so now the current view model in our navigation store will be a home view model but that's not going to change anything because our main view model isn't getting the current view model from the navigation store so inside the main view model we're going to need our navigation store in here as well so we'll create a field for that and we can add that to the constructor. And now for this getter, we can just get the current view model from the navigation store. So just delegate this property to the navigation store's current view model property. And we no longer need to set the current view model in this constructor. And before we forget, let's go ahead and set up our navigate home command inside of our account view model. So our navigate home command will be a new navigate home command, of course. Import that, and that needs our navigation store. So we can just get that through the account view model constructor. Let's generate that constructor parameter and let's just import this namespace. So almost ready to test this out. Let's go ahead and update our app.xaml.cs. So our main view model needs the navigation store. Let's create one of those and just instantiate that. And then we can pass that into the main view model. Now, actually, if we run this, we get nothing on the screen because we haven't set our initial view model on the navigation store. So let's go ahead and set that up. We will set the current view model at the beginning of the application to the account view model. That needs our navigation store as well so that we can use our navigate home command. All right, here we go. So we got our initial view model for the application and now let's go home and nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Am I going crazy? Let me go to my navigate home command. Make sure we're actually getting into this command and we do indeed execute this command. So the last execution worked as well because the current view model is now the home view model, but we're still showing the account view. And why is that? If we look at our main view model, the current view model property on our main view model, which is what our content control content has a binding to, points to the navigation store's current view model. But whenever this current view model on the navigation store changes, we never raise an on property changed for the current view model property on our main view model. So the view never re-grabs this value and shows the updated content. So what we need to do is raise on property changed for the current view model whenever the navigation store's current view model changes. So the best way to implement this is with an event. So we'll just have a public event. It'll be an action. So the event handler for this event will just be a function that returns void and takes no parameters. And we'll call this current view model changed. Whenever we set a new value for the current view model, we're going to want to raise this event. So let's open up this property. And of course, we're going to need a backing field now for the current view model. So the getter is going to be pretty straightforward, just return the current view model field. But in the setter, not only are we going to set the current view model field to the set value, but we're also going to raise this current view model changed event. So I like to wrap my event invocations in a method and we'll call this on current view model changed. Generate that. We'll take our current view model changed event and if it does not equal null, so it has something subscribed to it, then we will invoke it and all the subscribers to the event will be notified. And who exactly wants to be notified? Well, that would be the main view model. So when we get our navigation store, we are going to immediately subscribe to the current view model changed event. We'll generate a method to handle that event. So on current view model changed. And when the current view model changes on our navigation store, we want to raise a property change for the current view model property so that the view re-grabs that value and renders the correct view. And to do that, we can just call it on property changed and the name of the property that changed was the current view model property. 
and only property change that's just implemented on my view model base and all it does is invoke the property changed event that is required for I notify property changed and here we go let's go home there we go perfect and go to our account and we haven't implemented that so let's go into our home view model and we're gonna need to implement the navigate account command and I just want that to send me back to the account view so let's go ahead and create that command the navigate account command and this is going to be extremely similar to the navigate home command so actually I'm just gonna copy all of this into my navigate account command make sure I fix this name to still be the navigate account command and import the navigation story but instead of going to the home view model we are going to go to the account view model and our account view model needs the navigation story we have that we can pass that in and now back in the home view model we can set up this command to just be our navigate account command and this needs our navigation story so we can get that through the constructor generate that parameter and since this constructor changed we have to update it in our navigate home command because our home view model now takes the navigation store alright so let's try this again go home go to the account so there we go we are successfully switching between our views if I want the first view to be the home view model just gotta change that in my application startup there we go got the home view looking good but of course you may notice that we have these two commands the navigate account command the navigate home command and watch me click between those they're pretty much exactly the same all we do is set the current view model for the application the only difference is the view model that we set so really we should just generalize this command to be one command called something like the navigate command because otherwise we could end up having tons of commands over here just to do this simple navigation to a different view so what I'm gonna do is delete one of these commands so we'll delete the navigate home command and rename this to the navigate command and as we recall the only thing that was different between these commands was that we were instantiating different view models so we can actually abstract this to a callback that will give us back the view model that we want and that callback will be a func that returns some kind of generic view model so a t view model and since we're using generic types here this navigate command will be a generic with the type being a t view model and we'll call this callback create view model because that is what it's going to do when we call this func, it will return our view model. So let's get this callback into a field. And now when we call this function, it'll return the T view model and we'll set this T view model as the current view model for the application. But we have an issue, and that is that the current view model for the application needs to be a view model base. So we need to set that constraint on whatever this T view model type is, because this type could be anything. It could be an integer. And of course, we can't set the current view model to be an integer. So we have to constrain this with a where to ensure that the TV model is a view model base. So whatever this TV model type is needs to inherit from view model base. And that is indeed our scenario. So for instance, on the home view model, our view model type is simply the account view model, which does inherit from view model base. And all we have to do is pass in a callback function that returns an account view model and takes in no parameters so we will define that here and the account view model that we return will just be a new account view model instantiation which takes a navigation story which we can pass in so we can do the same thing in our account view model change this to the navigate command navigating to the home view model which does indeed inherit from view model base so all is good there and the callback function will simply return a new home view model and will pass in all the parameters that that view model needs so now we've successfully boiled down our navigation to just be one navigate command that we can reuse all throughout our application and same functionality as before go to account go back to home and there we go we are successfully navigating between our views and I strongly believe taking this navigation store approach where this acts as a mediator that facilitates communication between our view models is a very powerful approach and is definitely going to help us as we implement more advanced navigation scenarios it's going to be much easier so stay tuned for that so just a quick rundown we have a current view model property on our main view model and this property determines the view for the application by going through these data templates that map view models to views and then our navigation is all controlled through a navigation store 
which stores the current vModel for the application in a centralized state so other vModels or commands can update the current vModel for the application and whenever the current vModel gets updated we've raised an event that the current vModel has changed and our main vModel listens for that event we call it on property changed for the current vModel and then our view updates. Again, navigation crucial for any front end app, so hopefully you all can use this in your own applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.